by the association of your name with the Balco steroids investigation? It was a little troubling, but, um, you know, I, I didn't have any idea what was going on with the Balco thing, and I never uh, took anything or uh, took any steroids or anything, so I, I'm clean on everything. How shocked were you to be served with a subpoena, or had you known that was coming? Um, it was, it was kind of shocking, and, and I was, it was real shocking, actually, and I, I was like, what's going on, you know, but, you know, I knew that I didn't, didn't do anything wrong, knew that everything was all right, and it was kind of like, wow, you know, I just won a big fight, and now this, you know, I, I can't, can't get a break of anything, and I knew that, you know, I didn't do anything wrong, I knew that everything, you know, everything I took was natural, everything I did was, you know, an up and up, I trained very hard, and, you know, it's been reported that some um, sources in the Balco investigation are suggesting that athletes may have been given illegal or banned substances without their knowledge. How can you be certain that that didn't happen to you? Well, I'm very certain. I mean, you know, I believe that I didn't take anything and taking a polygraph to a lie detector test uh, proves that. So I know that, you know, I, I know who I am, yeah. Whose idea was the polygraph test? My attorney, right before, to make sure that people knew that there was no funny business going on. Knowing that I took the test for the people to, to let them know that I'm clean, and that's all that matters. You also have the assurance of having passed a drug test here in Nevada prior to the De La Hoya fight, correct? Yeah, I passed it, oh, that passed out with flying colors. Yes. So you're utterly clean on all substances which are covered in the Nevada test. However, it does not cover the one substance which is most controversial in the Balco investigation, right? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know what that, what that may be. All I know is that I was clean, and I know that I won't take anything illegal. That's just not my MO. And, you know, that's just me. I, I love to fight. I love the sport, and I love to be a healthy person. A lot of boxers lift weights now. Um, how long have you been lifting weights and how extensively? Well, I've been lifting weights since high school. I was on a weightlifting team as, <laughs> in high school, so that's where my strength comes from a lot. Um, when I was lightweight, I stopped lifting weights because I couldn't uh, maintain my weight trying to be a lightweight. So when I went to welterweight, I went back to, to doing my weights. So if people have seen your body change in the last couple of years, it's because you went back to weightlifting after not having done it for a significant period of time. Exactly. I couldn't, I couldn't do it um, and, and be a lightweight fighter. It was, it was hard, so I had to just kind of lay back from the weights. Yeah. You've fought southpaws before, but fighting Winky Wright isn't like fighting just about any other southpaw, right? It's a little different, um, but uh, if, you, if you move the right ways, you can, uh, you can counteract uh, his strengths and... Uh, and take advantage of it, yeah. Your winning margin over Oscar De La Hoya came from body shots. Your dad says that, you've said so yourself. Winky Wright is extremely protective of his body. Other fighters have had difficulty getting to the rib cage. Can you get there? I believe I have one of the best body shot attack uh, in boxing today. I mean, outside of, you know, I, I kind of watch a lot of fights with Bird Duran and few others and I know how to get slip in the shots to the body. Is it fair to say the more you can get Winky to trade punches with you in this fight the better off you're going to be? Uh, I think in this fight I can do it all. You know I, I feel so good going into this fight. It's remarkable. Um, I feel even better I think than I did with De La Hoya. So you're in the midst of preparing to fight Winky Wright. Uh, and the business opportunity arises to try to make a fight with Felix Trinidad. Um, was there any discussion of trying to put this business off so that it wouldn't affect your focus in any way for this fight? Well, definitely. You know, I, I, did, I, I was focused for the fight, and I wanted to be, I was focused all the way, but I wanted to make sure everybody was focused on Winky Wright. You know, I don't, I don't want a situation where, you know, he's a sleeper and he come up, up the back door, kind of like uh, what happened to Ricardo Mayorga. Um, so, you know, for this fight, I made sure that I was in the best shape I possibly can be and I was as sharp as I can be. But the deal is, in effect, already in place, is it not? Well, I mean, I'm not sure if, if there's a... Um, 
something that's written, but I know that, you know, he spoke and said what he's willing to do, and I spoke and said what I'm willing to do, and, and we left it at that until after the fight. If there were only three remaining fights, and it was Wright, and it was Trinidad, and it was Hopkins, and you won them, would that be enough? That could be enough, yeah, I would believe so. That would be a big mark on history, wouldn't it? Very big mark on history.